heart of America, the nation's number one liberal voice, where truth and common sense rule. This is The Ed Schultz Show, where America comes to talk. Now, live from the studio at 30 Rock in New York, Ed Schultz. All geared up for extensive pie coverage here on The Ed Schultz Radio Show. Rupert Murdoch attacked with a pie at the hearing just moments ago. We got full pie coverage on MSNBC. (laughs) Hello, Americans. Good to have you on board. Here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show, Rupert Murdoch uh, giving testimony along with his son James at uh, the uh, in, in London in front of now this isn't Scotland Yard this is the Parliament correct yeah they should be in front of Scotland Yard but they're not so anyway some guy how can they not how can they not know that somebody's coming in with a pie I tell you what that had never gotten past our TSA guys <laughs> Rupert I'll- Murdoch is sitting there giving an answer and his wife is behind him Wendy and she can be heard saying no no <laughs> and then she gets up to protect him and this guy. Pied uh, Rupert Murdoch. It was his, it was the last set of questions, wasn't it? That's correct. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, was that lemon meringue or what was that? I was wondering. It kind of looked to me like shaving cream. You know how you you sit there, you bring we've a got, look, sh- look at this. We've got still shot coverage now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is a pruder film. Well, Murdoch. Okay. Here's the bottom line. He goes in there today, apologizes, didn't know anything, didn't know about the payouts. Didn't know about the phone hacking. We're too big. I, I, we're just way too big. I could have never known any of this stuff, although I'm really sorry. And uh, it's appalling. It's embarrassing. It's terrible. Uh, we didn't do our readers right, blah, blah, blah. The end of story. That, that's pretty much what. And, and his son, James, James Murdoch, the chairman, uh, or, or, or one of the higher-ups, obviously, the number two in the company, I mean, he, he just protected his dad big time. And the, dad. And, and the dad is kind of like the crazy uncle in the whole deal. You better watch out what he says at the family gathering. Without a doubt, the kid is great at testifying because he just talks around in circles and you can't really follow where he's going. The old man, it, it is like your old grandpa sitting at the Thanksgiving table and you don't really know what he's going to say. That's what Rupert's been like this morning. Yeah. You know, he said, I don't know anything that's going on in these companies, but I work 10 to 12 hours a day and I'm one of the hardest working people in so the world. So what, what is the conviction for pie and somebody at a hearing in Parliament? I don't think they get the death sentence. All right, that. here's the kid, James Murdoch, cut one, apologizing. Here it is. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And first of all, I would like to say as well just how sorry I am and how sorry we are uh, to particularly the victims of illegal voicemail interceptions and to their families. It's a matter of great regret of mine, my father's, and everyone at News Corporation. And these are standards... These, these actions do not live up to the standards that our company aspires to. Standards? <laughs> standards? Tell me, folks, you wonderful Americans out there, do you think Fox News has any standards? <laughs> There's our text question. <laughs> There's our text question. Tonight. Do you think Fox News has any standards other than to call uh, uh, Teresa Hines a scumbag and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. President of the United States with a deep-seated it, hatred of white people. Yeah. The standards. Oh, yeah. The standards and practices over there at Fox News. Uh, all right, here's cut two. Here, listen to this one. As for my comments, Mr. Chairman, and my statement, which I believe was around the closure uh, of the News of the World newspaper. Before you get to that, I would just like to say one sentence. Right. This is the most humble day of my life. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> that, see, that was James Murdoch, the kid, and then Rupert interrupted. I, I just like to say one thing. This is the most humble day of my life. There's one for the archives, isn't it? All right. Let's go to cut the cut uh, cut three here. Here it is. Who, as well as Clive Goodman, was involved in phone hacking in, in the news of the world? As you, as I think, uh, as I think you made it clear earlier, Mr. Chairman, that there are a number of there have been a number of uh, arrests um, of former uh, News of the World uh, employees. These are matters for current uh, criminal investigations, and I think it's understandably it's difficult for me to comment in particular around uh, some of those individuals. Now, that's pretty much when I stopped watching, because uh, we're, we're now down into the BS big time. Look, uh, they're, they're not going to say anything that's going to hurt themselves legally, 
and it seemed to me that the kid was watching the old man left and right. Uh, and look, you, you, it was so predictable. We didn't know anything. We're too big. Uh, we're sorry. And and that really. And, and then the pie incident took place late in the game, which is was, is being played as the highlight tape of the whole thing throughout it all. Uh, and was he? They're they're saying that he was attacked at the parliament parliament meeting. How'd the guy get in there? Good, great question. I have no idea how it works over there. Evidently, like you said before the show, they don't have TSA feeling him up for his pie. Yeah. Uh, this Rebecca Brooks is is now emerging as a key figure in all of this. She knows where, no pun intended, where all the dead bodies are. Okay. She, she's going to be the fall woman, not the fall guy, but that's who they're going to throw under the bus. Here's cut five. Here it is. You have repeatedly stated that News Corp had a zero to- has a zero tolerance to wrongdoing by employees. Is that right? Yes, me, yes. Can I take you back to 2003? Are you aware that in March of that year, Rebecca Brooks gave evidence to this committee admitting paying police? I am now aware of that. I was not aware at the time. I'm also aware that she um, amended that for considerably very quickly afterwards. I think she amended it seven or eight years afterwards. But did you or anyone oh, else? Sorry. Did you or anyone else at your organisation investigate this at the time? No. Can you explain why? I didn't know of it. I'm sorry. I'm. I am. If I can just say something. And this is not is an excuse. Maybe it's an explanation of my laxity. The news of the world is less than 1% of our company. I employ 53,000 people around the world we, who are proud and great and ethical and um, distinguished people, uh, professionals in their life. And perhaps I'm, and I'm spread watching and, and appointing people uh, whom I trust. I mean, what is this? I mean, the, the guy's got 53,000 employees, but he has no idea what the number two in the company is doing. Exactly right. I mean, how <laughs> stupid are we? I mean, when uh, she admitted to paying bribes to police, he didn't know about that? You mean he doesn't even read his own newspapers? He doesn't even pay attention to the news? The number two in the company admits to bribing the cops, and he doesn't know anything about it. That's exactly. I mean, <laughs> this is a Fox News classic. And then he stammers through, uh, not really able to give it a give reason as to what he knew or didn't know. He's just trying to stay out of the limelight is what he's trying to do. Uh, let's go to cut six. Here's another dandy. Uh, why did you enter the back door at number 10 uh, when you visited the Prime Minister following the last general election? Well, because I was asked to. You were asked uh, okay, to win- so the Prime Minister... At 10 Downing Streets, hey, Rupert, we got to talk. Can, can, can you use a back door? <laughs> and and in, that, in that line of questioning, they go through the fact that heads of state and everybody comes through the front door, but Rupert has the back door treatment at 10 Downing Street. Cut seven. This is a dandy, too, about payouts. I'm just, I'm just intrigued as to how these conversations go, because um, I would have imagined it would go something along the lines of, so the editor of the News of the World, anything to report, you know, anything interesting going on. Um, and um, the editor of the News of the World says, uh, no, no, a bit of standard week. Uh, you know, we've, we paid Gordon Taylor £600,000. <laughs> um, surely in he your... Never said, in your he, never, surely, he never said that last sentence. Surely in your weekly conversations with the editor of the News of the World, something as big as that, paying somebody a million pounds, <laughs> paying somebody... Seven hundred thousand pounds. Surely, you would have expected the editor of the News of the World just to drop it into the conversation at some point during the weekly channel. No. You wouldn't have expected them to say that to you. No. Uh, he wouldn't expect. He wouldn't expect. Uh, you know, a million pounds to come into the conversation when they're looking for information. Here's what I do like about these British meetings: is that we don't get any, any of this Republican, Southern, Senator babbling. Uh, Mr. Rupert Murdoch, I'd like to thank you for being here today in front of our committee. I have revered your work for so many years and watched you over on Fox News. In fact, we'd like to thank Fox News. 
You know, can you just say, that, that's basically how the hearings go in America. You get some Alabama Southern senator oh, yeah. who's a redneck that can't talk straight. Joe Barton would be I'd apologizing. Like to, I'd like to apologize to you <laughs> for what's going on. Well, the other thing, too, is if this ever happened in America, what you would see the narrative set out as, this is an attack on free speech. This is the liberals trying to take down the conservatives. This is all nonsense. And I imagine Fox News will do that today. It's fascinating to me. Fox News covered this wall-to-wall as long as as well as the other networks. Now, here they are yesterday on the air. Cut eight. Here it is. The company has come forward and they've said, look, uh, this happened a long time ago <laughs> at a tabloid in London. Somebody did something really bad, and the company reacted. Yeah. They closed that newspaper. Yeah. All those people got fired, even though 99% of them absolutely had nothing to do with it. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Murdoch, who owns it, has apologized. But for some reason, the public, the media, keeps going over this again. For some again. reason. <laughs> for that gosh, Duncan. For some reason, Parliament wants to know who's getting paid off to twist the news. Uh, it, it is amazing to me. The bribing that's taking place. I just, I just can't believe the media is covering this. Well, and douchey, too. Come on. This is one of the same guys that took after Acorn. Acorn has to be completely eliminated <laughs> because some, one person in one office talked to a fake pimp. Just remember, they have standards. <laughs> one 877 This is the Ed Schultz Radio Show. We'll get into the minutiae of all of this. Mike Papatoni, you're going to join us. Robert Greenwald, Brave New Films. Eric Bollert, Senior Fellow, Media Matters. will all be here. Is this the beginning of the end for the big empire? So far, I would have to say legally, Murdoch has done himself no harm. I could be wrong on that. We'll find out. Stay with us. We're right back. Spanning the continent tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, The Ed Show on MSNBC.